Jesus <laughs> was big on ifs. No, really. Jesus would say things like, if any man, or if this, or if that, always setting up as though there were preconditions or possibility of choice or a recognition that not everyone was going to accept what he had to say. As a matter of fact, the majority of what Jesus said always gave the person the opportunity to accept or reject as they chose to. Because, you see, he didn't come to condemn the world. Jesus came that through him the world might be saved. And the word might is put in there specifically because it doesn't mean it will be or shall be. It simply means that it could be, dependent upon what the person themselves do. And that often means you have a choice. You have the opportunity to do or to be or to say or to hear or to respond in some way to what God is doing every day. That's your choice. Now, he said that if we would walk in the light as he is in the light, we would have fellowship one with another. Have you ever noticed that people often put on a facade? You know, like in the morning, you know, you get up and you got to get dressed for work. That's kind of a business facade. You know, you get all cleaned up and really put on your best dressed business attire so that you can work in the business world. I mean, obviously, you don't go to work looking like a slob unless you work in a slob factory. <laughs> and no, I don't think you work in a slob factory. I think that if you get dressed for work, you work at some job or some function that has expectations of how you present yourselves because that's how you deal with communication, cooperation, and fellowship together. You prepare yourself to have cooperation with your fellow workers together to achieve some common purpose or design. And that's what Jesus meant when he said, if you walk in the light, you have fellowship with the light, or if you walk in the light as he is in the light, you have fellowship with one with another. It meant that if we would be real about who we are, we could have fellowship or common experiences and discuss things together. Because you see, it's one thing to get dressed up for work and to everyone together works at getting and accomplishing a goal. But let's just say that, say, someone walked in that didn't work at your job and they put on the uniform, you know, the, the suit and tie, you know, and came in looking good, smelling good, and talking good, but as soon as they started working, you realized they were no good. Well, you see, that's kind of what the light is about. Jesus, when he said that if we would walk in the light, meant that if we would come to the light with honesty, that letting the light, because Jesus said that light has come into the world. Men love darkness more than they love the light, lest their deeds be exposed and they be revealed for what they are. So a person that walks in the light is willing to reveal themselves. They're willing to open up, as it were. They're willing to show their stuff. You know, present their resume. Give their abilities a chance to be made manifest to everyone around them so they could see what they're made out of. To see who they are. What they are how they operate, what they do. A lot of times people make misconceptions about people because they view people from the outside. They look at them in one certain set of circumstances and say, ooh, ick. You know, kind of like the way we feel when we wake up in the morning. You roll over in bed and you look at your partner or your wife or your spouse or whatever it is that, you know, you may be looking at, your dog, your cat, <laughs> you know, and you go, ooh. <laughs> Clean that up. Oh, the dog pooped last night. Uh, it stinks in here. You know, but the point is, you don't look at just that circumstance of your dog doing his duty when he shouldn't have, or your spouse having malatosis, meaning bad breath, because guess what? In the morning, most people do. But you look at the volume of what the person is in order to know who they are. And that's what Jesus said in the volume of the book, the Bible, it is written of him. So, if we want to know, really, what God is all about, we need to know the volume of who he is, what he is, and how he operates. And that's what it was meant by when we come to the light. We should come to God and begin to discover who he is, so that we would begin to uncover 
the reality of our misconceptions about who God is. We only see things on the outside. We don't really get to know God's heart, do we? And we don't really get to know the person next to us much either. Now, do we? You see, that's why we're told to come to the light. Because once we begin to let our walls down, once we begin to admit to God who we really are, we find out He already knows who we are. We come to God just as we are, and we discover when we're born again of the Spirit that God already knew who we were. As a matter of fact, we discover that once we come to God, usually He's got a better handle on who we are rather than who we pretend to be. And He often lets us know pretty quickly how easily He accepts us because He knows really what we're made out of. Now there's something interesting about fellowship. When you come to the light as He is in the light, you discover that other people also know you a little bit better in some ways than you do. You see, everyone has this blind side and this overt side, you know, this obvious side that you put up front in front of everyone. And that kind of hides a lot of your faults. Sometimes we ourselves like to hide our faults behind this facade of who we think we are and who we want to be. They call that the id and the ego in psychology, but the reality of it is this. Who we're becoming is not who we are today. Who we're becoming is what we're going to be when we finally arrive at our destination which for some of us as born again Christians is in eternity. For other people that destination may be God only knows, but unfortunately some of it might be a hell. So if you're a hell raiser, you may be a hell destinator and your destination is checked off and signed, sealed and delivered just as soon as you die. Oh boy, wouldn't want to go there. But the reality of our life's experiences teach us that we grow, change and develop according to our environment that we're in. So our environment often influences how we change and react to who we are becoming as opposed to who we are today. A lot of people that were raised in certain environments as children change as they go through the years and they learn wisdom and they learn to incorporate some of life experiences into who they are so that they can become someone who they're going to be in the future. That could be good or bad. When we come to the light, as he is in the light, as Jesus said to do, then we change our experiences because we come into the light. We become into the environment of being very obvious, very open. As a matter of fact, we should be learning to let our walls down and our heart open. We should be learning to put our hearts on a sleeve, so to speak, and be that sensitized that we could be crying in an instant or caring in a moment or sharing the reality of who we are anytime, anywhere, any place. Because that's how God was. God was very obvious that who he was was who he is, and who he is is who he was. That's why he said, I am. Moses said, well, wait a minute, now, who are you again? And he says, I am. He says, no, wait a minute, no, that's not good enough. I need to know your name. And he says, I am that I am. This is who I am, I am. And Moses didn't quite get it, because you see, God is, and that's the point. That's what He is. He is. He is a being that has an existence. How we try to relate to that, we put all kinds of names on, and that's why people adapt to the certain amount of knowledge that they have. They're always limited in their ability to understand God because they're limited, and God is limitless. So how would you explain that to someone who's limited? You really can't, can you? See, that's why He kept trying to tell people, look, you keep trying to put me in a box, and I keep trying to tell you I made the box. So, every time you put me in a box, you find out if I made the box, then I'm really not in the box, I'm the box creator. So, guess what? <laughs> you really can't put me in a box. And that's how we misunderstand God a lot. Now, you, in your own world at times, have been misunderstood. You have been often treated as though someone thought they knew you better than who you felt like you really were. You felt like maybe you were misrepresented or you were misunderstood, that you didn't get a chance to stretch your stuff or show what you're made of. Well, that's why we have the scripture that if we would walk in the light, if we would literally every day be who we are, not just pretend to be who we are, but be who we are, 
if you're a slob and you're learning how to be not a slob, then learn how to be not a slob and admit it. Don't deny the truth or the light of what God has shown you and revealed to you, but rather reveal you're a sinner saved by grace. You're a person who's working on it. You're not perfect. Nobody is. There never has been a perfect human being except Jesus. There never will be a perfect human being except Jesus. The rest of them are putting on a facade, a phony story, a backstory to cover their faults. Because the reality is, they have faults. They're just trying to hide it. That's why Jesus said, if you would, if you come to the light and be exposed for what your deeds are, then guess what? If you already know you're going to be exposed, you're not worried about it because you're just doing who you are. So be you. Be real. Be honest with yourself and be honest with everyone around you. Then you'll have fellowship one with another. The reason why people have divisions and strife and anger and angst and they kept themselves away from each other is because they try to pretend that there's something they're not. They try to contend for something they can't do. They try to invent something that they're never going to achieve. But if they would be real and honest about who they are and present themselves just as they are, the way they are, then people would accept them for who they are and there would be fellowship between them and who they are. That's how we have a fellowship one, and one with another. Once you begin to meet someone, you know, you usually talk to them and you find a common ground. But once you find that they have some weaknesses, that are just like your weaknesses, all of a sudden the ties that bind you are the weaknesses that you have in common, aren't they? They're not your strengths. They're not necessarily the things you like to do, but sometimes they're the weaknesses where you help each other to overcome them. More often than not, some of the friendships that tie and bind, that hold people together, are those things with which you find yourself in a crisis of need. And then you find someone who's closer than a brother who will stick there with you by and by because they have the same need. They have taken what they have failed at and reached out and said, Hey, I've been there. Been, been there, done that. I'm like you. And don't you feel closer to someone who's been through what you're going through than you are with someone who's never been through what you're experiencing? That's what Jesus meant when he said, They that come to the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. You begin to be more truthful and honest about who you are and what you are. Once you start to do that, you'll find that living is pretty easy. You don't have to fake it. And you know as well as I do that most people in any job or any business or any situation or circumstance, no matter how much training or how much preparation they have, irregardless of whether they're a journeyman, a craftsman, or a master craftsman, there's times when they fake it. They don't know, but they wiggle their way through. And that's what people do. And you don't have to deny the fact that you do that. You can admit it because it is all obvious and open before God. And that's why He brought the light into the world, so that we could let down our phoniness and begin to incorporate the reality of who we are so that we would have real depth of character, real meaning to our words, real solid standing in front of our community of whoever we are, whatever we are. Because you know as well as I do that one of the first things people say about politicians is they're all liars. And the bottom line is they are because they keep lying. They won't stand up and admit that they do things or they mess things up or they made an error or did something wrong. No. If anything, they'll stand up and say, well, you know, the other guy did it. The other guy did this. No one will stand up and say, yes, I did it. And then go forward saying, okay, now, now vote for me. No, that's not the way they work. The point is, is that we as human beings are fallible. We make mistakes. We make errors. We're supposed to be fallible. We're supposed to seek to be changed. We're supposed to rearrange our lives so that we would no longer think of ourselves as supermen, but rather as people who work cooperatively together to overcome our faults, helping each other, encouraging one another, and having fellowship one with another. So you see, 
no one is separate in and of themselves. They are a member of the body of Christ, and they are a part of the body of Christ, and members in particular, so that they would be connected with another person. So, when you get connected, and you should, when you begin to talk to other Christians as you could, when you begin to relate to other people as you ought to, then learn to walk in the light as he is in the light. Learn to let down your guard. Don't be so protective even though you may get hurt at times. But rather, just let yourself be you. Be the person God made you to be. Today, not perfect, and maybe tomorrow not perfect, but on your way to the end result, which is perfection in his sight. Because if you do walk in the light as he is in the light, not only will you have fellowship one with another, but God himself will fellowship with you. Because he sent light into the world, that we would be revealed whether our deeds be of darkness, or whether our attitudes, our actions, and our direction of who we are and what we are would be children of the light. Are you? Then walk in the light as he is in the light.